In this video, we'll look at everything you need to know to run the AOAC-approved answer for E. coli 0157H7 kit. This presentation serves only as a visual guide to the written materials supplied with the test kit. To ensure accuracy in the performance of this test, please read and follow the test's written instructions in their entirety and consult with your Neogen representative with any questions. You'll find a list of kit components and items needed to run the answer for E. coli 0157H7 kit in the last minute of this video. Remember, it is important to use good microbiological laboratory practices. This includes wearing proper PPE and ensuring that all equipment is working properly and is calibrated in accordance with your laboratory's policies. Sampling and Enrichment Preparation This video demonstrates the procedure using raw ground beef and environmental samples with Neogen's Answer for E. coli Enrichment Broth Media. Weigh out the appropriate amount of sample and rehydrated media into a sterile stomacher bag as seen in the chart. Close up the stomacher bag as shown and incubate at 42 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degree for the amount of time listed in the kit insert. Ensure you are using good environmental sampling techniques as demonstrated. When using a sampling swab, you should be able to cover an area that is between 1 inch by 1 inch and 4 inches by 4 inches. Apply as much pressure as you can going horizontally and then vertically, then once on a diagonal. While doing this, roll the sampling swab in your fingers. When using a sampling sponge, you should be able to cover an area that is about 12 inches by 12 inches. Apply equal pressure on the sponge as you vigorously sample going horizontally, vertically, and on a diagonal to cover the area. Place the sample back into a sterile stomacher bag and close up as shown. Label the bag appropriately. Collect the rest of your environmental samples in the same manner. For sponges, 100 milliliters of media is recommended. For swabs, 10 milliliters of media is recommended. These should be incubated at 42 degrees Celsius, plus or minus one degree, for 16 to 24 hours. Initial reagent preparation. Prior to running the kit, the lyophilized lysis reagent, lysis reagent suspension buffer, and appropriate number of reaction tubes for the number of samples you're running need to rest at room temperature for at least 15 minutes. We are running eight samples today, so we've removed one strip from a foil pouch and placed it under a paper towel to protect the samples from excessive light exposure. You should also place one set of permanent caps under the paper towel at this time. Unused supplies should be returned to refrigeration immediately. Dry heat bath preparation. While the reagents are adjusting to room temperature, you can set up your dry heat bath units. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for calibrating and oiling the dry heat bath units your lab uses. This video demonstrates the setup of a benchmark dual dry heat bath and a single VWR dry heat bath. Turn on the dual block's main power source by using the switch located on the back of the unit. Fully open the lid and place a 48-hole aluminum block into each of the slots. Then, place a thermometer into the offset hole in the corner of each block. Press Mode Temp Time for Block A once to select the temperature setting for the block in the rear of the unit. The last digit of the temperature's display flashes indicating the selected field. Using the Block A arrow keys, press and hold up or down to adjust the temperature setting to 37 degrees Celsius. Holding down the button adjusts the setting temperature faster. The block immediately starts heating. To use the built-in timer, press Mode Temp Time for Block A twice to select the time setting for Block A. The last digit of the selected setting will flash. Note: The display includes hours and minutes. Using the Block A arrow keys, press and hold the up or down to set the timer to 10 minutes. Don't start the timer yet. Next. Set the temperature for block B to 80 degrees Celsius and the timer for 20 minutes 
using the controls for Block B, following the same steps you used for Block A. Again, the block will immediately start heating. Do not start this timer either. To power on the single dry bath heater, press the power button on the front. When powered on, a red light turns off near the main power button and LEDs display the temperature and time. The single unit will not begin heating until you turn on the temperature setting. Place the 64-hole block in the unit. Note, if your system has three single blocks, the 48-hole blocks and 64-hole block fit into these units interchangeably. Start the heater by pressing the on-off button. A green light comes on to indicate the unit is heating. To set the temperature, use the up and down arrows to adjust the display to 56 degrees Celsius. Do not use the VWR's timer when running this kit. Instead, use a timer similar to this one, set to 3 minutes. If you are using three single blocks, set the first to 37 degrees Celsius, the second to 80 degrees Celsius, and the last to 56 degrees Celsius. Remember, the green light must be on for the block to heat. Reader, Computer, and Vortex Preparation Make sure the answer reader and provided laptop are plugged in, and the connector between the reader and laptop is secure. Turn on the answer unit by holding the button on the front just for a moment. It takes the unit about a minute to load the software for use. The first time you use the reader, you need to select the third box on the touch display with the gears. Then press the down arrow once at the bottom of the screen. From here, select Remote Mode, which is the second box down. The screen will say Remote Connection. Note, the reader's lid should remain closed except for placing reaction tubes in or taking them out of the reader. Turn on the laptop and double-click the T16 ISO desktop icon. In the upper right-hand corner, click Connect. A dialog box will appear. Click Connect next to one instrument available. It takes a moment for the computer and reader to connect. When they do, a new menu appears, as well as a green light in the upper right corner of the screen. Now, make sure that the vortex is plugged in and turned on. Check the three heaters. They should read 37 degrees, 80 degrees, and 56 degrees Celsius, respectively. If they do not, they may still be heating. If they appear to be done heating, indicated by a beep from the unit, check the thermometer in each block. If they do not read the appropriate corresponding temperature, adjust the heating block to within 2 degrees. Always go by the thermometer reading. Once the thermometer reaches the correct temperature, the heater will hold there even if the digital display varies from the thermometer setting. Take a strip of the 1.2 milliliter cluster tubes and mark them to correspond to your labeled samples. Return the cluster tubes to the rack and label any additional tubes as needed. Remove your gloves and from the computer, select Run. Select 9822 E. coli 0157H7 from the test type drop-down menu, then click OK. Fill in the username and lot ID from the kit and corresponding labels from your samples in the sample IDs. These should match the cluster tubes as well. If you do not put in a sample ID next to the well number, the reader won't read it even if it has a sample. Be sure to provide an ID for every well you're running. In this case, we are only running 8 samples, so wells 9 through 16 are empty. Any number of tests can be run at once it does not have to be in multiples of 8. Reagent Preparation Using the 10 milliliter serological pipette and provided pipetter, add 18 milliliters of the lysis reagent to one vial of the lyophilized lysis reagent that's been at room temperature for at least 15 minutes, but less than one hour. Gently swirl to mix. This is enough lysis buffer for 18 samples. Return the non-reconstituted reagents to refrigeration. Any reconstituted reagents can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for up to 30 days. Mix up a fresh container of 10% bleach solution daily. 
we recommend a sealable wide mouth container. The pipette tips and used reaction tubes and caps will go into this solution. A spray bottle with fresh 10% bleach solution is also recommended. We do not ever recommend autoclaving the pipette tips or the reaction tubes. Assay Procedure Note, see kit insert for certain samples that require a 1 to 10 enrichment dilution in phosphate buffered saline. Add 50 microliters of the enrichment culture to a 1.2 milliliter labeled cluster tube. Repeat this for each of your samples using a 100 microliter filtered pipette tip. Then add 450 microliters of the lysis reagent solution to each of the culture samples, making sure to switch tips between samples. At this point, the remaining part of the assay is the same as for any other answer test. Verify that the temperature of block A and block B are 37 degrees and 80 degrees Celsius respectively, plus or minus 2 degrees. Remove your samples from the cluster tube rack and place them in the 37 degrees Celsius area and close the lid. You can place the thermometers back in if you want, but the blocks will hold temperature fairly well. Start block A's 10 minute timer. The dual heater does not stop heating when the timer sounds. After the 10 minute incubation is complete, remove the thermometers, if you place them back in, and immediately open the lid and move the cluster tubes to the 80 degrees Celsius block. Close the lid, and if you like, return the thermometers. Then, start the block B timer you set to 20 minutes. Note, the cluster tubes can remain in this block for up to 60 minutes. When there are three minutes left on the 80 degrees Celsius incubation, Remove the reaction tubes from the paper towel and make sure the pellet is at the bottom and in the proper position. Give them a little tap if they are disoriented. Place them in the 56 degrees Celsius heat block and start a timer set for three minutes. Alternatively, you can use the answer reader as a heat block, but you must keep the lid closed as much as possible. The reaction tubes need to be heated at 56 degrees Celsius, plus or minus two degrees, for at least three minutes, but not longer than five minutes. Make sure the permanent caps you placed on the paper towel earlier are ready to go. To make sure you don't mix up the orientation of the tubes after vortexing, it's a good idea to mark the end that goes toward the first sample. Critical assay procedure. The next part of the procedure needs to be performed quickly, in less than a minute, and ideally within 30 seconds. With the 8-channel pipetter set to 50 microliters, remove the thermometers from the dual heat block and open the lid. With the reaction tube still on the 56 degrees Celsius heater block, remove the caps from the reaction tubes. Place the used caps into the 10% bleach solution. Using the 8-channel pipetter with 100 microliter filter tips, pipette 50 microliters of the samples still in the 80 degrees Celsius heat block. It is important not to prime the pipetter so as not to disturb the sample. Draw from the top third of the sample in the cluster tube. Dispense the samples into the reaction tubes on the 56 degrees Celsius heat block. After dispensing, discard the pipette tips in the 10% bleach solution. Quickly place the permanent caps onto the reaction tubes. Rock each cap back and forth while pressing down to ensure that the new caps are 100% secure. Remove the reaction tube from the 56 degrees Celsius heat block and vortex it briefly. Check the reaction tubes for bubbles that might be at the bottom or in the middle. If you see any, give the tubes a light tap to release the bubbles to the top. Bubbles on the top are fine. Quickly place the tubes in the reader and close the lid. Remove your glove and press the play button on the answer computer. Note, the answer machine may make noise as it works you will have your results in 10 to 18 minutes. Test results. You will see the results appear on the computer screen in real time. When the reading finishes, the results display as a presumptive positive or a negative. You don't need to interpret the results. In the case of an invalid, which appears as a question mark, you must run the test again using the retained samples. The final step is saving the results. Cleanup. Remove the reaction tubes from the answer reader. Never remove the cap. 
place them directly into the 10% bleach solution. After you have finished with your testing for the day, be sure to let your heat blocks cool completely down. Place all unused samples or reagents back into refrigeration within an hour of removing them. Wipe down all of the pipetters, equipment, and surfaces with 10% bleach soaked paper towels. This includes the reader and the lid of the dry bath heater. What comes in the equipment kit? One answer reader. One answer laptop computer. One answer ethernet cable. One vortex adjustable speed. One three channel timer. One neogen webcam. One 10 milliliter pipette pump. One 20 to 200 microliter pipetter. One 100 to 1000 microliter pipetter. One 8 channel 10 to 100 microliter pipetter. One rack of filtered 100 microliter pipette tips. One rack of long 4.7 inch 100 microliter to 1000 microliter pipette tips. One 40 slot autoclavable test tube rack. Two 48 well aluminum blocks. One 64 small well aluminum block one dual chamber dry bath heater, and one single dry bath heater, or three single dry bath heaters. Three thermometers. Please make sure not to discard them with the bubble wrap. What comes in the answer for E. coli 0157H7 kit? One kit insert, plus additional information on Amplicon. One rack of 12 strips of eight cluster tubes, 1.2 milliliter. Six vials containing lyophilized lysis reagent. Twelve strips of eight permanent caps for the reaction tubes. Two sealed foil pouches, each containing six reaction tubes with lyophilized answer for E. coli 0157H7 reagents with a desiccant pouch. Contact your Neogen representative with any questions or for information on how to order this kit.